Hello, my name is Jim Turner. Today I'm going to talk about why the motorized bottom bracket is the most efficient drive system for an electric bike in the world. The motorized bottom bracket is incredibly compact. It has the most energy and power of any drive system for its weight and size. It fits easily in the bike and provides a low center of gravity. The motorized bottom bracket came about through a series of development events. When I first started to design an electric bike, I had the idea that a hub motor would be the most efficient way to drive an electric bike. So I hired a world-renowned electric motor developer and asked him to design me the best hub motor he could do. Well, after several months, he came to me and he said, Jim, I've tried, but I just don't think this is a good idea. A hub motor is going to be big, it's going to weigh 10 to 15 pounds, be big around, be very inefficient. You, you really should look at a smaller motor running higher RPM. So that put me in a bit of a bind. I didn't have any other ideas. So for several months, I had no electric bike. And then one day when I was riding my road bike, it came to me. The bicycle is the most efficient means of transportation developed by man. And that means for the amount of energy you put in, it travels the longest distance. And the bike had developed over 100 years to be the most efficient means of transportation. And then I realized from my studies at Stanford that the human muscle and an electric battery motor system are very similar. Think about when you ride your bike. Your muscle, your leg muscle, can put out an incredible amount of power for a short period of time. What happens to your leg when you pedal real hard? It gets hot, right? Heat builds up, and you get out of breath. You can't do it very long. But if you spin at about 80 RPM, you can do that for a long period of time. That's your aerobic region. Get enough oxygen in. And a motor system is really the same. You can put out a tremendous amount of torque. But if you do that, it's going to get hot. It's very inefficient. It won't go very far. Same thing happens with a battery. Battery doesn't like to go high current for a long time. Bad idea. So I thought, if the motor is similar to the muscle, why don't we just put them in parallel with the pedal system on the bike that already exists? Take the most efficient means of transportation in the world and add an electric motor system. And that's how the motorized bottom bracket came into existence. So here is the motorized bottom bracket. It's housed low on the frame, and let's see how it works. The unique feature of the motorized bottom bracket is that it actually goes through the gears just like you're pedaling, so it's always matched to your speed. Let's see how that works. See, I'm pedaling. Imagine pedaling here, and the sprockets are going round. Now, the motor is going to do the same thing. The motor is turning the front sprocket just like when you're pedaling. So this is a synergy between rider and motor, a sort of human electric hybrid. So let's see that with both together, we're pedaling and the motor's going. Go much faster and easier. So what does this mean to you when you're out riding? It's a big deal. What it means is the motor's always matched to you. So take a bike, a fixed gear bike. Remember a bike you rode as a kid only had one gear. Now that bike's good at a certain speed on the road, but what happens when you climb that steep hill? You tried and you tried and you stood up and you pushed and pushed until it was too steep and you couldn't go anymore. So this is the same thing with the motor. With the motorized bottom bracket, you're always running with those gears, so you shift those gears and the motor's always happy, your legs are happy, and that's how you know when to shift, is you just feel your legs. When they're getting too slow, the motor's getting too slow when you downshift. Your legs speed up, you upshift. So you can climb the steepest hill and also go fast on the flat. And that's one of the drawbacks of the hub motor, is the hub motor is like you on your kid's bike. It's stuck in one gear. It's, it, 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 when it gets to a hill, it has to strain and strain. And so what it does is just like your legs, it puts more and more power in, it gets hot and gets very inefficient. And after a while, you run out of battery or you overheat. Let's look at a little bit of why that happens. 
So this is a chart of power, which is in watts or horsepower, and motor speed in RPM. So every motor has a maximum power, maximum efficiency point, and it varies by motor and design. But the point is, is there's one point. If you operate the motor down here, like a fixed gear or a hub motor would going up the hill, you're very inefficient. If you go too fast, you're not very efficient. So you want to be right in the middle. And this is what a motorized bottom bracket does. By shifting gears, the motor is always kept in its most efficient range, which is the same range as your legs. Because you keep your legs in this region when you pedal and shift. So again, we have this synergy, which makes it very intuitive to ride, very easy to ride. So let's look what happens at the wheel. This is a hub motor, and this is the torque or the propulsion that pushes you. So with a motorized bottom bracket, you can shift gears and always keep the wheel torque high. With a hub motor, it's flat, and then it drops off as you go too fast. So it's not nearly as efficient, not nearly as fun to ride. So the motorized bottom bracket is intuitive, it's efficient, and it's fun to ride. Now I wanted to demonstrate a little bit of why the motorized bottom bracket is so efficient compared to a hub motor. Because the motorized bottom bracket runs through those gears, you always have an incredible amount of torque. So what we've done here is the OptiBike is in first gear, lowest gear for best hill climbing. And let's see what it's like for acceleration. So I'm just going to touch the throttle here and you see what happens. The bike instantly accelerates because it has an incredible amount of torque at the rear wheel. Now, we're going to shift the bike into the top gear, and we're going to see what happens. So now, we've shifted the bike into its top gear, or ninth gear. So that gives you the most speed going down the road, the least hill climbing ability. Let's see what happens when I turn the throttle now. Now, the bike will still go, but you notice it isn't wheeling up ready to go. That's because it doesn't have the same torque at the rear wheel. And so you can imagine with a fixed gear bike, or a hub motor, you're stuck with that decision. Do you want to be in first gear or ninth gear? Well, we want to be in first gear climbing hills. We want to be ninth gear on the flat, just like you would on your road bike or mountain bike. 